Hi, we're going to be talking about making Christmas cards with uh, doing two kinds of Christmas trees. This is, I'm using a, a B Company paper that you can get online. It's in uh, 6 by 9 and what we're going to do is we're going to fold one and that will end up being able to go into an envelope like this. So you can do that. Okay. So, what other materials are we going to use? We're going to use pencil, of course. We're going to use a water brush. Now this water brush is filled with water in the well here. And the way you get to use this water brush is by taking, putting pressure on this area and, and letting the water come out. You can see how there's been some brown in here. So, and I can go ahead and press and more water will come out as I'm going. So you can do um, different kinds of washes with that. You're also going to use, I'm using um, a wristband and that's how I'm cleaning my brush. So I'm pushing the brush, the brush here and then pushing all the water so that there's no color. And you can see there's no color. Okay, so let's go on the other side. And I'm taking a tissue right now to dry that up. Okay, the other thing we're going to do is we're going to make bulbs. So using the pen touch gold. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to draw some uh, Christmas trees. I'm going to go here and you get the, the green here. And I'm just going to go on to my palette and pick up the green, press here to have more water. And then I'm going to draw the plumb line or what it would be called also is the trunk. And then I'm taking this and I'm just going to go back and forth with the, the tip of the brush. And I'm going to work on it like this, back and forth on either side. And what's really nice is that these brushes usually have some really nice tips. So, and you can get the water brushes online on Amazon for sure. Um, and I think in Michael's you can get them too. So here's your first tree. I'm going to clean this off like I showed you before. I'm going to press on my the, the water thing there and I'm going to clean out the brush. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get... Um, make another one, but this time I'm going to make it beige. And uh, so I have some, some brown here. I'm going to press here to make more water and make it more um, light colored. Again, I'm going to go ahead and do my line and then come back in here to get some more color and just back and forth, back and forth. So I'm basically doing an upside down V. And what's nice about this is that uh, you can make lots and lots of brush um, trees, and um, it, it doesn't. It's not laborious. You don't have to take a lot of time to do it and that type of thing. But you want to keep your lines somewhat in somewhat. Um, small. You don't want to make them too large. And you can see an example here. I've used gray in the background for the background trees and then I had this. So this is the same thing. And Now if I want to I can add more color here if I'd like. And so I can go like that. I can do this. Put some more water in here. Same thing I can do. I'm cleaning out my brush. I'm going to go like that. Go back to the green. And I can do some more definition if I'd like, like that. So it's a fun kind of thing to do. It doesn't take a lot of time or skill. You just have to practice. And that's how it is everything. Everything in, in art, everything. As I've said before, you wouldn't expect a kid to sit down and start playing the piano if he's had no experience, okay? So that's one tree. So what we're going to do is we're going to try a different tree. 
And so you could do this, and then you could put messages here of Happy Merry Christmas. And you can definitely use stamps here. Let me try another tree here. What we're going to do is this time we're going to use a triangle. We're going to draw the triangle. And then a little box underneath here. And that will be your, the trunk. And what we're going to do in this, this uh, instead of using the tip of our, our paintbrush, what we're going to do is use the side and we're going to push here on the water so the water can come out. Now, you will occasionally, and you've got to make sure you don't get it too flooded, so I'm lifting it up to make sure that I haven't gotten crazy, because sometimes you can push too much water out, and then you have too much water. Now, the secret to watercolor is that it will not, it will stay where you have placed the water. So you see how that's shiny? That means that is wet, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the palette that we have here and I'm going to pick up some of that green, a little bit more maybe, and I'm just going to put it in and just let it flow and all by itself. It should not go outside of the lines at all. And I'm going to be a little bit crazy because there's going to be, I'm going to have some white there for snow. So... Um, and the white is always, that's how you do your white in watercolor. You let the paper flow through. So, and here I am doing that. And I'm not doing too much. I'm, I'm going to let it sit and just, well, I'm going to dry it with a water, with a um, hair dryer. But I'm going to let this sit here. And I'm going to go ahead and dry this. Uh, I have this fat, fantastic Conair Pro Baby hair dryer, so I'm not having this big, humongous thing that I'm having to work with. Now there's two ways. There's two ways of knowing if something is dry. You can touch it, and if it's cool, then you know it's dry. You can also look at it on the water in, in light. And if it's wet, it will shine. This is not wet, so it's probably still a little bit damp, which is fine because what I'm going to do is I want to put some more color in here. And I'm going to go like this on the side. I'm pushing a little bit here with my brush, which you just have to keep on practicing until... You get that. And so, a little bit here, a little bit there, so I can get some variation of tone or values, depending on what school you listen to. So, I'm coming in here, getting some more. And I'm going to press on my, my barrel a little bit more, so I can get some. And while this is still wet, while this is still wet, I'm going to put some blue in here so that I have some values down here. This is where the shadow will be. And so I can do that. Um, what I also want to do is I want to put some more green, so I'm going to clean this off and put some more green up here, just a tad more, just so I can have some variety. Okay, while this is drying, what's the nice part about this is that while this is drying, I can go ahead and put the per in the, the brown in. And so I have some brown already in my palette. And I'm going to just go ahead and paint that in. Now you notice I'm using the side of my my brush, not the tip. You use the tip when you're drawing basically. And then I'm going to go ahead and put some more in here because this is where the shadow will be. Now I can choose to do two things here. I can let this dry completely and then erase the pencil marks or I can just keep the pencil marks in there. It depends on what you want to do. So that's doing two, two um, Christmas trees, one like this. And then when this dries, I'm going to go ahead and put bulbs in. So, you know, little balls, Christmas balls. 
Oh, that went a little bit too much. But, so you can do that and you can use these kinds of things. Um, you know, any kind of holiday marker will do the trick. This is a little bit too much, so so that you understand, because I made a mistake, you can learn from it. I can pick this up with a Q-tip. And that should do the trick. Okay? Um, and you can go ahead and draw that. That should be it. Thanks a lot.